Welcome to the Oral History of the University of Laverne, a documentary series prepared by the students and faculty of Honors 304-351 during the university's 125th anniversary year, 2016-2017. I'm Al Clark, one of the faculty, and I created this episode myself, covering the presidency of Dr. Leela Newcomer from 1968 to 1975. I call the episode Revolutionary Change because the institution embarked on an entirely new direction under his creative and controversial presidency. First, however, let's briefly look at what Laverne was like under President Newcomer's predecessor, Dr. Harold Fosnock, who, during his 20-year presidency, built 10 brick buildings on campus, including Brandt, Hoover, and Monero, expanded the curriculum, stabilized the budget, and secured accreditation by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges. At the time, the Laverne was a Church of the Brethren school, mm -hmm. and it was, it, was a, it was a religious school, um, including all the usual things that happen in a religious school, and you know, requiring religion courses, and having chapel, and all those kinds of things. And even to the contract, uh, which said something in it about being a part of the of the daily chapel, mm. and which daily chapel, daily at first, and then it went to I guess I was like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and mm. Tuesday and Thursday, and then just Friday, and, <laughs> and soon. When I, when at the interview, the first thing they asked me. Before even they asked me my qualifications, my degrees or anything, they asked me, do you smoke? Do you drink? It was a dry camp. There was uh, no smoking, no drinking allowed on the main campus. Yeah. And before I could respond to that question, Dr. Fastner said, I, 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 I think you must be a very good Muslim. So you don't smoke and you don't drink. Well, do you think Laverne's emphasis uh, in this changing world will change too? Oh, I think so, Don. Uh, certainly, we'll try to meet uh, the uh, demands of the time because uh, of the dynamic of the liberal arts. This is a terrific challenge, and I think the liberal arts colleges are ready for it. Harold was just a gentleman, and uh, he, was, he was certainly not an aggressive person, but he got a lot done, mm. and um, I, I really respected him. And, and what he stood for, uh, his values are what we say today are our values. Mm. And he really lived them. Uh, he was a, uh, a business machine person. Mm. And uh, he taught some business classes. And I don't know, I don't think he invented it or anything, but, but he used business machines and, and taught it back when they weren't very common. Mm. So that was that was one thing. Um, he, he was a he was a a good uh, speaker mm. and a pretty inspiring speaker, despite the fact that he wasn't real dynamic. Um, he he brought a lot of uh, of support to the university, but it was, none of it was big support. And that was that was you know, the problem that he had mm. was was not being able to get big donations. And he was followed by Leland Newcomer, and Leland Newcomer was a man of innovation and experimentation, and experimentation and innovation, and innovation and experimentation. <laughs> a little bit about what the college was like when you came here, 1968. <clears throat> Well, it was a, it was a small, uh, I think maybe 700, 800 kids, something like that, and uh, uh, liberal, liberal arts college, known for training good teachers and uh, and for preparing people for the theological seminaries and the ministry, and. Uh, then uh, other 
good brethren kids uh, for various other kinds of things. Even though history is exciting, it's always more thrilling to look ahead and realize that the college will have many more years to come and uh, colleges like Laverne, Laverne included, are planning to meet the challenges of the future. The dynamic of the liberal arts will grow with uh, the times and I'm sure that Laverne in building new buildings and developing program will uh, be alert to the needs of uh, the days to come. And with that accreditation, we were prepared to move on forward. Uh, accreditation was a, a major, I had a major conflict, conflict with the philosophy of accrediting agencies. Mm -hmm. they, you know, number of books in the library, number of degrees that the professors had, number of books that the faculty published, all quantitative uh, input, uh, no output, no outcome. Uh, it was all based on, on uh, a means, but no results. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, that's what I what mean when it, it learning is what it's about, not teaching. Teaching is the means. And in a little different philosophy of uh, management, which tended to be somewhat confrontational. So we had some exciting years for the next seven years uh, with Leland Newcomer. What did the faculty feel about Newcomer? Very mixed. Mm. They were used to Fosnot. Mm. And Fosnot was a gentle creature who didn't appear authoritarian. And many of the faculty didn't like the way he reacted. He, he would cut down people in public meetings. Leland wanted to be able to do what he wanted to do, and, and Virgil would say, oh no, no, we can't do that, and we can't do that, and he, and he made an HR director. He, he dumped his job as treasurer. Uh, Virgil Wilkinson, poor really? Virgil, took it right in the nose, and Ernie Eikenberry and Kate Hoskins, uh -huh. and these people who, who some of the people did, didn't like Leland at all. Mm. To a newcomer who was a, 180 degrees from, from uh, Fasnacht, uh, yeah. And um, a, an interesting, interesting man. I liked him very much, but he, you never knew what he was going to do. I think we waste money. And uh, I, I can go into any I think I can go into any college and increase their productivity and decrease their cost. Any college. And uh, it's not easy, but the, the problem is faculty again and tradition. Now, you know, I, 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 faculty will just have a cat fit at this, but you know, typical small college, liberal arts, uh, or not that, universities are, are even worse, but uh, they, they, they the, the, the faculty, there's no accountability. There's no real control. They say, you know, uh, we've, we're prepared, we, we, we do our thing, and that's, that's enough. Uh, not, not true. Uh, you don't, uh, every college wastes a whole lot of money. They have a, a, a lot of unproductive people, a lot of unproductive time. Now, for, for, for those, every one of those, there's a Bob Neer, and there's a, you know, a, a Gladys Muir. I learned a great deal from Harold. I learned a lot from Lee Newcomer, and I used to tell Lee, you know, you're a great mentor because I've learned a lot of things that I want to emulate, but I've also learned a lot of things that I don't want to do that I've learned from oh. you. you know, he had a fiery personality, yeah. and he knew that, and he admitted that. He was a change agent. He wanted quick change. I was more methodical and change came about slower under my administration than his, but I learned a great deal from both of those men. You guys come in and <laughs> say, well, we're going to do this, mm. and I, I'm sure he had the, the trustees' support, uh, since they were, you know, each president has their own trustees right. pretty much, and uh, I, I suppose he had that and probably convinced them pretty pretty seriously that those were going to be, um, this was going to allow us to to do the things we needed to do mm. 
Um, and then the, the faculty complained, ah. just like the parking structure today. Mm. We don't need a parking structure, we need a new classroom building. And it was like that then. But, but also everybody was kind of excited because we were going to have an indoor gymnasium that was nice, mm. uh, that was uh, novel. Mm. We had a nice relationship, partly because I was honest with him. Mm -hmm. And he loved that. Uh, he loved you. He liked to fight, too. Mm. And so, um, at various things, I would oppose him. Not every time, not with everything, and in many ways he was a good president. Um, but on this issue, <laughs> I had stood no chance. And of course, that has affected the, the whole rest of the institution. Yeah, yeah. The off campus things. And Do you it might have been the right thing, but I don't think the military bases were the right thing. So how did the Board of Trustees come to select a nationally known innovator like Leland Newcomer? As it happened, one vote decided for revolutionary change rather than historical continuity. Really, I guess, how I got to Vern is rather, rather unique in that uh, I was at the time the superintendent of the Newport Mesa, newly unified Newport Mesa uh, school district in Newport Beach, Corona Del Mar, <coughs> Coastal Mesa. And uh, the uh, committee of the, of the executive committee of the board here at the Burn Board of Trustees came down to see me and surprised me and, and wanted to know whether I would be interested in becoming the president of the Burn. And uh, I, I really kind of thought they were kidding. I mean, I, I sort of laughed <coughs> and I said, no, you've got to be kidding. They won. I said, well, you know, I, I, I'm not sure I'm the right person for there. Uh, they said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, I think every president that you've had up to that, this time uh, had been a brother minister. And I sure am not a brother minister. And uh, so I, you know, I just, not. and then they went on to say that uh, they really, were very much interested in in the college becoming known and viewed as a quality educational institution rather than uh, as essentially a church college. Uh, when Harold resigned, gave notice he was resigning, then of course the board did what they do with committees and boards do, yeah. and looking at candidates. Right. And the final two candidates were Lee and Herb. Oh. And it was to be announced on uh, homecoming. Oh, oh, really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, so it was all set up at homecoming. Yeah. Took, you know, the football game but at the stadium. Uh, they decided they would announce it on homecoming and introduce the new president. Uh, yes. As it turned out, the board was split. Oh. And that was a, they were tied. Wow. On Saturday morning they were tied. Wow. And it was coming. I wasn't at the meeting, but I heard a lot. It was. It really came down to the wire. The, they, the fact that the board was split, and they said we we were going to make a decision by homecoming, and the the so then they had the decision. Do we uh, make the announcement? We haven't made the decision yet, or do we make the decision? And one man changed his vote. Oh. And so Lee was selected. Wow. Oh. Morning. I got. Horrible telephone calls from Ortmeyer uh -oh. and God knows who else saying, you defaced college property, blah, blah, blah. I drive over and the students had had a happening uh -huh. all over the art building, throwing paint all over the art building. Uh -huh. I don't know where they got the paint. Uh -huh. I didn't organize it. I didn't have any paint hardly. Yeah. So the art shack, that's what we called it, and it was a shack, Yeah. was painted all over with splats of paint, and it, and it three times in big letters on it, it said, fuck chapel, fuck chapel, oh. fuck <laughs> chapel. Furthermore, the greatest tragedy, I think it is a tragedy, and I regret it to the day I die, 
It was the board of trustees meeting on Saturday. Oh, with the paint? This, uh, and they saw the paint. Uh, and Herb Hogan was in line to be president. And they said, you can't control those students, you're not going to be president, and they hired Leland Newcomer. Mm. I never got over The person who changed his vote, I believe, was the church of the brethren. Uh, as he thought about it, he thought, you know, well, of course, Lee was not much of a church, but Herb was in the church. And I think he was torn, and he said, you know, with the way Herb's going and what's happening, I, I think we better go with Lee. Mm. And so the book... I think it was over the sensitivity movement in that was part. part of the, oh. Well, when you mentioned Herb not having control of the campus, ah, I see. here's where Herb was involved in something that was controversial, and it was a sensitivity. So I see, I what see. What the students wrote the side of the art once said, uh, <laughs> you can't control students at that point. So. Right. The changes that President Newcomer wrought expanded, diversified, and secularized Laverne College, making it, for a time at least, a leading edge in American higher education. Dr. Newcomer's innovations included the founding of the off-campus programs, CAPA, the College of Law, and the EDD program, as well as the construction of the iconic Teflon-covered building now known as the Sports Science and Athletics Pavilion. He also revolutionized the calendar and the curriculum. One of his directions was, I want to develop these off-campus programs because they will help finance the institution long term. And I think he saw that as an opportunity <clears throat> for Laverne. The, the second was that he really wanted to develop highly individualized education at the undergraduate level. And he, he's the one who talked about a thousand programs for a thousand students. Uh -huh. and. Not all of that could be implemented in the way he envisioned it, but he certainly caused people to think about some opportunities to make positive changes in what we did. We went for a period of time without grades where we had <laughs> pass-fail, and we yeah. learned that doesn't work so well because it's so hard for a student to transfer that kind of credit mm -hmm. or to have a graduate school evaluate a transcript, but from an educational standpoint, from a pedagogical standpoint, many of his ideas were ahead of their time. They couldn't always be implemented because of the traditions of higher education and, and the way we do look at transcripts and transfer credit and right, admission right. into graduate programs. Right, right. But, but Lee had a real interest in developing the off-campus programs he had an interest in doing experimental things at the undergraduate level. Some have stuck. Uh, Interterm was one of his mm. projects, mm -hmm. saying, what if we could take a one-month period where people could do something for one month really intensely? They could travel. They could take a one course that was particularly challenging or particularly interesting to yeah. them over that one month. So I, I think Lee broke us out of of the traditional mold, and, and he threw a lot of things on the wall, and some <laughs> stuck and some fell off. Yeah, yeah. But never a dull moment and always a thought. <laughs> we modified the curriculum considerably and uh, got down to a place where we had practically no required courses. Uh, we introduced um, the concept that any course in the catalog ought to be the student ought to be able to challenge it. We introduced the whole idea of independent studies and directed studies. Uh, some of these things we still have and some of them we've shuffled off. See, I, I said that the, the essential measurement of, of quality education is student learning. And if a student can demonstrate that they have learned, they shouldn't have to take the course. And, and seat time, I said, was an old idea. Well, to the Western Association of Colleges and whatever that was, you know, uh, uh, that was almost heresy at the college level. And uh, When I first came in 1969, uh, Newcomer was the new president. He had a vision of, he talked about, if I remember it correctly, a program for a thousand programs for a thousand students, uh, majors. Or I tried, I really worked on the idea that the essential purpose of schooling is learning. 
student development and the, the outcome is an educated student or a, uh, and, and uh, teaching is a means, not the end. And I felt as, as I knew education, you know, the, the too much emphasis, and particularly at the college level, it was, it was you know, teaching. Uh, I, don't, I didn't feel that at the college level they had, they zeroed in on who the kids were and what their needs were as much as they did say in, in other areas. It was, it was the subject matter. Okay. It was what, what kids should know. And I s felt it was what kids should be. Mm -hmm. I was also very excited about the new calendar mm. of uh, January term and one month May terms. And the May term didn't last, but we still have, they do still have. Yes, we still have it today. And I was so excited because it gave me the opportunity to take students off campus and do field work. Oh, yeah, Lee Newcomer, he came in. Uh, Lee had, uh, he, he was very innovative. But he had a motto, and the motto was, let's do it now, and uh, we'll solve the problems later on. Mm. And uh, that's exactly the way he functioned. He wow. starts something. <clears throat> We'll figure out how to handle it. If it's a good idea, that's the way we go. <laughs> he was concerned that our curriculum was old. Mm. And Herb Hogan was the academic vice president. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said of the areas I liked the best, I didn't want to do the money raising. I liked the curriculum faculty supervision area mm -hmm. where I'd be working with Herb. Mm. At that time, we revised the curriculum. So I worked with the faculty in a whole new curriculum. And I also worked with Lee. He wanted to revise the uh, governance, you might say. Oh. So he, he gave a new formula as to how committees were to operate, and we abolished all the old. My first year was Leland's new year. Mm. And so, in many ways, um, some of the more <clears throat> progressive faculty thought, we have to do this. But many of the other more conservative and more church-related uh, people said, we don't like what's going on here. Mm. We're really changing the, the nature of this place. And of course we were. And so, <laughs> uh, and that's what happened. It, it changed from a small conservative place to one who was offering, I mean, it was, it was what was happening in education at the time. Mm. And so he pushed that and he got it through and we had field studies. Even though Newcomer was uh, Church of the Brethren, uh, he changed everything. Uh, he, yeah, and, and he <laughs> saw that this, the school probably wasn't going to go if they didn't innovate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, his, his uh, program for, for uh, older, older students was was very innovative at that time. Mm -hmm. So we, when we developed work on the mission of, of Laverne at that time, we said hey, Laverne's mission is to provide quality teaching and learning services uh, uh, wherever they're needed and wherever we can meet them competently. And uh, then we started expanding. Yeah, you know, best example of that is the, is the LV Kappa program, but it's a, it was a program for so-called mature adults who had a lot of life experience, who didn't have a degree, and they wanted to get a degree. There's a lot of people like that out there. Lee Newcomer taught me a, a phrase that I still use today frequently, and that is, if you, if you don't know where you're going, you may end up someplace you don't want to be. So I think it's really important for an institution to have a long-range vision. Mm -hmm. That'll change. Circumstances will change, external and internal. But I think you need to have a target and keep refining it. So a master plan is appropriate that goes beyond your lifetime and mine. The first three years that I were here, was here, I think we put this place on the map educationally. As far as, far as high schools 
and people who would recommend people to colleges and, and that kind of thing, and people who knew about Laverne College, I would say that that increased, I don't know how much, in three or four years. But I always leave. I need new, 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 new theaters. For assistance with the series and oral history of the University of Laverne, I'd like to thank my colleagues Brian Best, Ben Jenkins, and Don Pollock, as well as my former colleague, the late William Neal. I'd also like to thank the many people who participated in oral history interviews, especially John Gingrich, Ahmed Ispahani, Joella Mahoney, Dan Merritt, Steve Morgan, Bob Neer, and Bill Relf, all quoted in this segment. I'd also like to thank Wilson Library Archives and Special Collections for allowing me to use excerpts from interviews by Herb Hogan and Leela Newcomer, as well as an excerpt from the biography of Avern College. Finally, I'd like to thank Wilson Library Archives and Special Collections for allowing me to use excerpts from interviews that I conducted with John Gingrich, Ahmed Ispahani, Joella Jean Mahoney, Dan Merritt, Steve Morgan, Bob Neer, and Bill Ralph. Happy birthday, Laverne. Congratulations on 125 years of transforming lives, preserving values, and performing service.